hello and welcome back and today we're going to look at the really easy way to install Jellyfin on your QNAP NAS. Now for those that aren't aware, Jellyfin is kind of the open source and sort of one of the best media server applications you can run on your server. It's not the most straightforward, I'll be straight with you, and its configuration and its presentation isn't quite as polished as a premium product like Plex, and some of the client applications are a little shaky out there, but if you're looking for the best way to be able to configure your media server application and you don't mind using a little bit of extra time to do it, Jellyfin is probably the best way to get the best out of the hardware on your NAS and in today's video I'm going to walk you through the really easy way to install Jellyfin on your QNAP but a few disclaimers straight off the bat number one it, this isn't the only way to do it if you want it's always been impossible to install Jellyfin on your QNAP but for those of you that are of the less tech savvy or those that don't really want to go the extra mile and configure and really have to connect pathways in a little breadcrumb fashion towards indexing the media and the setup of the app it's never been that desirable um, now what I mean by that is normally up to this point if you wanted to install uh, Jellyfin on your QNAP, much like a lot of other NAS brands, you would have needed to install a container application like Docker or QNAP's own container station application. You would have to make sure you give it an area of space. <clears throat> You'd go into the application, you'd go into the create area, you'd have to search for Jellyfin, so you would just put the word Jellyfin, it would appear among the top ones, you've got lots of different ones there, Jellyfin, Jellyfin is pretty much predominantly the one everyone goes for, they'll open up in Docker, you can just go straight ahead and click install. And you would go through it, and when you're doing it, you have to point it in certain directions, and it's just not that straightforward. It's not difficult per se, but the way you have to set up your Jellyfin database is probably not as straightforward as one would like there to just simply be an application on the App Center for you to flick from, as well as, can you know, changing the configuration and settings from within Jellyfin, not running them in that container there in the background. Containers are good, but for the less tech savvy, they're very intimidating, which is why this video exists, because... There's actually a few different ways uh, to find uh, the installer for Jellyfin that's been created on the community. Now, the best out there, and I've tested two or three, is this guy or gal, 2023, um, PDULVP. Now, this person has created a few different GitHub installers for the QNAP platform, but as you can see, by a country mile, his most popular one is his one for Jellyfin. You can also find this on QNAP Club, there are a few different installers for Jellyfin, but I've hit kind of medium and middling roadblocks while trying to do this, the same with the MB installations there, and it's just overall, this guy's uh, GitHub installer is mwah, Trebot, it is spot on. And it has its own readme attached to it with lots of information about compatibility, installation, transcoding and that. And I will obviously link to this in the description. But what you need to do for this is head over to this thing on the right, this area here, where this describes the latest release of uh, the application while it gets further and further updated. That lives over here. And as you can see, it's very important to bear in mind that this isn't just Jellyfin. This is Jellyfin and it also includes uh, FFMPEG. This is a really important kind of flow, compression and playback add-on that Jellyfin needs to uh, kind of present files and stream files to the best of their ability. And that's contained within the installer, which is super important. Now, this uh, installer you're seeing here, um, as you can see the QPKG, uh, you go ahead and you click that button there. So click that and it will open up the downloader and then you'll start downloading this file. As you can see, I've already downloaded it there, hence the uh, bracketed one there. So that should allow you access to Jellyfin on your QNAP NAS. Bear in mind the hardware of your NAS is going to make a very, very big difference because you might be running a QNAP on like an ARM-based processor. And in those cases, double check uh, either the compatibility or availability in the QNAP store or go ahead and see if an ARM-based version of this has become available. Although I will say... This doesn't run great without the necessary oomph hardware underneath it, hence all those configurations. So if you're using an ARM, like a Realtek or a Marvel-powered QNAP, you're probably not going to have the best time there. Um, 
I will also add as well, if you go into the QNAP Club, there is add-ons for Jellyfin such as Jelly Amp here that allows you to use the HD station, the HDMI output, and use that great configuration that arrives with Jellyfin to play back your audio media on that visual settings of HD station. It's fantastic. It's all that broader degree of support. And for those of you running more complex audio um, files there, MP4As, um, you know, just the real heavy duty stuff, FLAC, that sort of thing, this can be very beneficial to you. But when you've downloaded uh, that file there in the background for Jellyfin, what you need to do is head into the App Center. And from within the App Center, Firstly, click the little cog and make sure you've put this tick in this box here that allows the installation of third-party unsigned apps. What does that mean as I click apply? Well, what that means is you are installing apps that QNAP have not deigned to provide in their own app center. QNAP has got a first party and a trusted third party section, which means you've got apps from third parties, such as obviously Plex Media Server, for example, and TeamViewer. But then on top of that, you've got their own first party apps that they've developed either on their own or with other parties into a single package. The apps we're talking about here from the likes of GitHub or QNAP Club are created by, you know, avid enthusiasts of NAS and, you know, coding and Linux and stuff like that. And they often modify um, applications that are available for popular third-party OSs into a version that runs as an installer on your QNAP there. But bear in mind, you're still talking about an app that the brand has not deigned to put on their own platform. That is to say, there may be security implications, there may be stability implications, and ultimately you may be undermining your system. So one take uh, know the risks before you install a third party app and two have your backups in corner local backup to usb cloud usb uh, a cloud backup there make sure you get your backups in place before you go ahead installing third party apps okay so when you've uh, ticked that box that allowed the third party installations the next thing we need to do is click this icon up here with the plus symbol as this allows us to manually install applications from third parties there so we click that button and then from there we click browse once we click browse it will go to our downloads folder and as you can see there is jellyfin that we downloaded just now and then click open for then click install after you click install, it will ask, are you sure about this? And there should be another warning on screen regarding third-party installations. I'm not sure whether it will appear here. Oh, it does, because I've already done this already once before. But it will ask you to verify what you're doing and you understand the risks that I detailed earlier. After that, it will start installing this app. As you've downloaded it locally, it should be a very fast install. It's not downloading remotely from the internet. It's doing a local upload on the local area network. And this will upload Jellyfin, the installer, onto your QNAP NAS there, just like any other application. And when it's done, you'll have a new icon on your range of applications and services for you to start adding your multimedia to be indexed, as well as setting up your Jellyfin media server on your QNAP. As you can see, it's now completed. We can exit there, we can exit there. And you'll either find Jellyfin here on your range of desktop applications, or you can go ahead to the top, click the three lines, and you'll find Jellyfin as a, one of the applications available to you. So when you're ready to start configuring and setting it up for the first time, just click that Jellyfin icon, and now we've got it installed, and we can start setting up our Jellyfin server. So click Next give your server a name and again you can call it whatever you want you can match your original uh, login for the system or come up with an alternate but this is going to be the doorway into your QNAP NAS within Jellyfin and if you're running Jellyfin on smart TVs on laptops on phones all those client devices you're going to be utilizing do bear in mind that whatever login credentials you create for this you're ultimately giving a doorway into your NAS so it's very important that you make it different to your existing login be it admin or otherwise into the QNAP give this a completely separate distinct access point there now you might want to change the level of access you're giving Jellyfin. Once you're happy with the level of access that you're going to give Jellyfin with regards to either the account or the application again conducted from the QTS side, go ahead and create those login credentials for Jellyfin there. 
click next and from here you'll be invited to start adding libraries so let's go ahead and create one library we're going to go ahead and select movies we're then going to give it a name we're just going to leave it at movies next click the plus symbol to select the folder that you're going to uh, ask jellyfin to check for movies so we're going to go ahead and go for where my uh, multimedia folder is here but yours will be different and again i've given it i'm going with an admin account right now so i can see everything you might not want to do that but i can go ahead scroll down plex media server there's my movies folder and then i click ok next up you can carry on and start dealing with metadata and how you want this to be presented so ultimately you can have it so how when the system start, starts looking for new data in there next up the metadata downloaders that's where jellyfin you know crawls the internet to get your cover data uh, your cast listings descriptions reviews trailers extra information and more next up you can look at retention of data on there so again you can choose whether you want to create an nfo which is kind of a text document layout of all that data and information you can even choose whether you want to save that information that metadata you've scraped locally as well as chapter extraction to break down the files for you and it creates its own uh, database there per file of chapters as it scans and that's it i've created the movies folder and you just need to repeat that now for each of your individual formats that you're going to be going for so what i'm going to go ahead and do is skip ahead to adding a bunch of different files and folders and get them indexing and show you the last step so when you've added your libraries you go ahead click next and then just again highlight just what kind of metadata language uh, kind of default geo stuff you want to go for there so i'm going to leave that in the united states for now just because i know a lot of you are watching in the us and that might reflect the metadata you see on screen but let's see next up the option to enable port mapping now this is effectively going to uh, allow the system to start opening ports up if you don't know what you're doing don't touch this but if you're going to allow and need remote access to your jellyfin server you're going to have to go down this road but make sure you know what you're doing when you're starting to map those ports and if you start opening them up whether it's utilizing qnap's own internal services to allow that to happen via qnap cloud or you're going to be using the quick connect uh, support that is inside uh, jellyfin there overall i'm going to leave that disabled but that's something to bear in mind for your own personal setup when you're done click finish and now log in with the login credentials you created earlier. Once that, as you can see, you can use their own Quick Connect there to set up that remote connection if you choose. But for now, log in with the credentials you created. And as you can see, the system will have already started scraping for that metadata for the individual files. Depending on the size of your multimedia collection, the amount of time this will take will differ but at least now you've got your jellyfin server up and running now in order to access this you're going to need to make sure you've got a client application on your phone your tablet your tv your console your what Ever. Yes, you can patch into Jellyfin with third party uh, media players such as VLC or Kodi, and there are some third party ones as well, as well as the option if you choose to, to go into the Jellyfin settings, go into the dashboard, and you can enable local DLNA support to allow the system to be picked up generally over the network via Universal Plug and Play and DBLA if you choose, and that will allow you to access the content and the database of your uh, jellyfin server but without logging in with the jellyfin client there you can do it over the local area network using your standard media server support on your client devices there and lastly just on the subject of playback and the denser files is to, we will need to just quickly touch on hardware acceleration or hardware transcoding or hardware conversions that is when files are converted on the fly to a more suitable version on the, depending on the client device you're using or the network connection and by that what i mean is you might be trying to play a 4k version of avatar 2 and you're running it on an iphone that doesn't need that massive file either for reasons of size network or battery alternatively you might be on a limited internet connection you're at a train station a bus stop a coffee shop whatever and therefore you're running on a much streamlined connection and therefore you might need the file changed on the fly all uh, predominant, uh, predominantly all media servers supported on NAS allow the reshaping, but hardware acceleration or hardware transcoding is when the system has got full access to the hardware inside to do it. Generally, that is utilizing uh, graphical components like embedded graphics or a graphics card. So, enable hardware acceleration if you're running a system that has either integrated graphics like the TS264 uh, that we're using today or 
other analysis that allow graphics cards and upgrades and stuff like that. So if you enable that, go for the drop down and you'll have to select the appropriate um, uh, agent there for your needs. Generally, you will find it's either Intel QuickSync or uh, VAAPI if you need direct access to the correct driver support on there, but it can differ depending on your system, less so in NAS. But you can go ahead and allow that as well as allow an encoding of HEVC formats, which is highly efficient video codec, which if you followed the channel before, are files that are using a much more modern um, compression technique um, rather than H.264 which is free open source everyone can use it effectively not really open source but it is whereas HEVC is a premium uh, in, uh, compression technique that makes you know cinema screen movies down to something teeny tiny but again it's premium because it was uh, developed by uh, production industry companies and therefore it's kind of paid for and some devices either don't support HEVC don't have a license uh, a license option to add HEVC or do not allow client side conversions of HEVC files to make them playable and therefore you'll have to enable HEVC encoding format on the client side that's the NAS in order to have those files changed on the fly to your own needs but that's really it up from this point forward it's like using any other media server application you better pick it up scroll it browse it locally on your own system to your heart's content just know that the benefits over something like this over plex is one support of that new av1 compression technique but moreover the hardware acceleration and hardware transcoding by another name there is free with a lot of platforms like mb and plex media server forcing you to pay a subscription cost to have access to the, in that very useful and very necessary service for some users. But thank you so much for watching. Once again, full props there to this chap who worked, to get, uh, worked on getting this GitHub together and has updated it numerous times. And again, there'll be links to that and a guide over on NAS Compares in the description. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this video helpful and I will see you next time.